Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Minutes with myself, Michael Berger, Mark Novak, episode 268. Wow, we're getting up there. The three biggest mistakes we see when people are buying commercial property. Good morning, Mark. Welcome. Good morning, Michael. So let's let's sort of get into it. Um, we're coming from the perspective you've just like you're you're you want, you've decided you want to buy commercial property. We won't really get into why commercial over residential. Let's just sort of go a little bit further um, into it where someone's made up, they want to buy commercial property, they found a property yes. they like, it's within their price range. For, for this example, let's say it's tenanted. Um, like what, are the, what we see people do wrong, um, one of the biggest ones is misled in rents. Mark, do you want to go through a little bit of the, what we mean by that? Yeah, so the way we arrived to this morning was we're like, hey, what does everyone have in common that absolutely is get buys a shit commercial property? What's, what does everyone have in common that people are just – we just look at it as trained professionals and just go, oh, my God, why did you make that mistake? What does everyone have in common that loses money in commercial? And then we were like, okay, well, there's actually – if, okay, how do we put that to top three? How do we put that to explain to everyone, like, this is just what you don't do when you buy a commercial property. It's the biggest mistakes people can make. And, like, fortunately, we are privy to hundreds of transactions. We see so many transactions, so many landlords and investors that we have the ability to say, that's a big mistake and that's a champion move. So in the top three, the number one would be, what's what's on that list? Misled in rent. The, yeah. So tenanted, it's leased, let's say it's leased for $40,000 a year. They've yeah. got a five-year lease. Sounds great, but sometimes it's not great. And where that can go really wrong is let's say it's rented for $40,000 a year. They've been there for 15 years though, so it may be inflated. Yes. The current, the, when it, the current rent, if it was to come vacant, may only yep. be $20,000 a year. So, or the owner owns the property and they want to sell it. There's a lot more value in a tenanted property. So they put a higher rent on it than what it would rent for. Maybe it's 30000 They do it forty because they know on a yield they're going to get a lot more money. It sounds good, but that's where it can go wrong because you're, you're buying it at 40000 on that yield. It can, it can change the price by tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Huge. So what a, lot, what a lot of people don't know is that in most leases, there's a, there's a regular increase every year irrelevant to what's happening in the marketplace that rent will go up if it's in the lease so uh four percent is pretty common um it's a figure that uh, landlords and tenants commonly agree to so irrelevant to if business is good business is bad economy is good economy is bad that rent will just gradually go up four percent every year now when you put that over a 15 year period the question that you've got to ask is, yes, the tenant's been there for 15 years. Yes, the tenant's paying that that rent. But is that if that is going to come on the market for rent, is that actually going to be market value or is it going to be way above or potentially even below? Very, very, and just because someone's paying it, it doesn't mean that's market. It's, it, that's a very good point, just because someone's paying it doesn't mean someone else will. <laughs> and, and if you're basing your purchase price off that rent that just someone happens to be paying, you could be in trouble. Because, Michael, for every 10000 of rent, how much asset value is that? So that is 10000 over six is 166000 a year. Is 166000 for every 10 grand of rent. So if yeah. the rent's 10 grand over market, you could be paying 166K over market on a com commercial property, that's less than one. And that's why you've got to check because you know that incentive is there for the owner. So you've got to check. 
Now, number okay. two, number two, number two, which is very like it, it flows on for number one. What's your backup plan? It's the number after number one. Yeah, number two comes after one. <laughs> yeah, what before your three. Plan? What's your backup plan? Because what happens yes. if it comes vacant? Is there another use? Is there another tenancy? Because, for example, you've got a great tenant, but it may be the fit out may be very specific to that tenant and it yes. sounds great that industry it, it's the rent's great the business is great hundreds of stores but when they've had something purpose built what's what happens if they leave is it easy to find another person in that field to use it um even if it's not as if they're paying 40 grand a year will someone else pay 40 grand a year is it 20 grand like, what's your backup plan if the perfect so, picture goes I'll give you guys an example. I'll give you guys an example. An old bank. An old yeah. bank used to have no windows to the street, so it could not be robbed. Um, so they, they didn't like to have a big glass frontage. They had often a big concrete, quite beautiful building, some of these old banks. But, you know, those columns, yep. beautiful and also what they did was they used to feel it was important to walk up to it. So they would have three or four stairs. Now, anyone who retails would never, ever, ever, ever take a property that has two, three, four or five stairs to go into the shop. It is like the cardinal sin, the thing you do not do when you are going commercial. Whether it's a coffee shop or whether it's a clothing shop, you want it to be on grade, dead level with the street. There it is. What's your backup plan? And that's hundred percent right as well. So, and then, because then that will lead to how long it will be vacant for. Do you have to spend money? Like there's perfect example, Mark, the banks, like the one in Brookvale, here's the example. It was rented for, yes. I think it was something crazy, 300,000 a year. So if you're yep. paying on a 5% return, that's a $6 million property. But, up, 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 up for 30 years. Yes bank goes it was re then empty for a year no empty for three years actually um yes. then it, you've got to spend money on it but it was then rented for seventy five thousand a year so that turns a six million dollar property into a 1.5 million dollar property and that so, goes to what's your backup plan because yeah. if you if you don't have a backup plan when you've got like I said, that a, a purpose-built facility, they don't want big windows in the front. They were a bank, old-fashioned style. They don't want it on street level. They built up three or four stairs. No one in retail wants that. So it was like you're stuffed. Yeah. You don't have that backup plan. Yep. Um, all right, number, number three, they sell the property. <laughs> we, the number three mistake that you will make if you own a commercial property the top three number one was number one was misled in rent especially if you're buying a tenant number, number two was having a backup plan what's your backup plan and number three is you sell it <laughs> so when especially when you can understand sometimes of the market like right now some rents are down 40 percent if your property is supposed to get 50 grand in rent on a five percent yield it's worth a million bucks but then you reduce it to 25 on a yield now it's worth 500 you sell it um or you panic it comes vacant you're worried about it being empty for six months and then then you sell it that way like a lot of people rush to sell don't they mark yeah, they do. What's the saying Luke had the other day, time in the market or something with property? It's not timing the market, it's time in the market. Yeah. So if with property guys and girls, if you are the magic, the absolute fundamental magic is the duration that you hold that little puppy. The longer the duration, the more it's going to perform for you. A bit like a plant, leave it in the ground, it will do everything but 
oh, I won't say die. It generally yeah. will always grow, 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 grow. If you uproot it and pull it out of the out of the grass, that's it. You got to eat it. I love that quote. Yeah. It's not timing the market. It's time in the market. It's not. I'm just writing it so I can put it as a comment. <laughs> I reckon it's yeah. just when that really hits someone. I think it's a bit of a penny drop moment. I really do. Because a lot of people, it's a big mistake we want. Yeah, it's a big. We see it all the time. It's like, and you know, we're like, we're selling the property for the client. It's like, you. Know, how many times, Michael, have I told people not to buy? I'm not, not, sorry, not to sell. Not to sell, not to sell. All the time. I, how I, many I times? Think all the time. Nearly every, nearly every appraisal. I, why are you selling? Because if someone tells me they're selling because they're betting against the market, I'm like, really? Let's have a think about this. Like, what is that really? What's going on? Oh, I love it when they say we're selling because we're upgrading. We're selling because we're doing this. I'm like, great, I'm your man. We can help. But when it's like, no, nah, I don't believe in property anymore, we sort of always push back. I've, we've heard it all the time. Let's go. Thank you. Great content. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that's a wrap. Anything else you want to touch on that, Mark, with commercial property? Yeah, look, guys. That you know, I, I guess in summary, uh, the 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 touch points for today are the basic big things we see people um, make is is they dump that fabulous property, they sell that in a moment of high or a, uh, in a moment of height, happiness, great, it's made money, they sell it, or in a moment of low, they like shit, yeah, you know, GFC. Uh, you know, getting married, uh, you know, uh, whatever, bit, cash flow is a bit tight, weather through it, push through, it will pay dividends, don't sell it, uh, and, and watch those sneaky rents because yeah. like we said today at the number one, like those rents can sneak up and for every 10,000 of rent a property gets, it is worth 166,000 more um on your calculations michael so that's that that it's is big. huge it's big isn't it you know that and you can really you can really be misled by by a long shot on rents that uh, that a tenant's paying when you're buying a commercial property and you put that on a million dollar per like a tenant paying 100 grand a year 150 like we're talking you can always buy another property with the money you could be overpaying but the one thing i also love on that there is huge opportunity, which could be a whole nother show uh, about getting that uplift from commercial property. You buy it vacant, you buy it with a tenant that's paying 40 and you can get 80. You've doubled your property value regardless of the market. It's beautiful. Yep. yep. But that's so be really careful guys. But that's it. That's your top three mistakes in buying commercial property. Hopefully this helped people out there today. Eh? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you everyone. Cheers. See you guys. Bye. Love you. See ya. Bye.